Hey everybody, this is Seth from Coming Out Tarot, and uh, I am doing a, a quick tarot thoughts because I've been I've been thinking about some things. Uh, one is, in particular, my sister called me, and she does search and rescue in the eastern side of Oregon in the mountains, and very often her experience is leading a dog to find someone who's missing. Uh, for multitude of reasons and the dog trails the missing person and then there is a search team that eventually finds the person and at the as an end result she tends to get to speak to the people that she's helped and the people that her dog uh, has helped and her dogs live with her they are a part of her life they're not just a, a dog she gets paired with they are her dogs um, and Recently, she had an experience where she was trailing someone who was lost and came upon the body before the search term did, team did. Uh, so this is unusual. They will uh, often find missing people alive, but occasionally find people dead. And as the tracking dog, it's rare that uh, she comes upon the person or the body before the team does because she points a team in a direction the dog is going northwest go that way <laughs> and this time she came upon the body first and that separated her from the living the people who had said we can't find our loved one and so she wasn't able to have that that closure of a conversation with the person who was seeking the loved one because once the once she signaled to the team that she found the body and that it was in fact uh, someone who had passed immediately the sheriff's office took over and they spoke to the individual they were notified and the individual left so I, I share this story to say that she called me because she had an experience that was completely unresolved, an emotional experience that was unresolved, a um, procedural procedural experience that was unresolved. And two things happen. One, I recognize this immediately as a tarot reader. Two, um, I recognized I had an opportunity to support her in everything that I've learned about situations like this. And uh, three, that I was going to get the chance to follow up with her and see what she thought, which was part of the part of the lesson is that sometimes you don't get to. So as a tarot reader, when I sit with someone and we have an intimate conversation about your life, your experience, challenges you're going through, the choices you're facing, the relationships that are burdening you or exciting you or turning you on or missing. Um, the experience is, is very one-on-one. -on -one. The experience is very intimate. And uh, as a, an empathetic person, um, I will, I engage in the emotional moment. And yet, as a professional in what I do, there is a distancing that happens because those are not my emotions. That is not my lived experience. What you're going through is not mine. It is your journey. And for other tarot readers out there, I hope this is a similar experience, but I know it's not the same for everyone. So I wanted to describe a little bit about what it was. So the sitter knows and other tarot readers have the same, you know, can, can reflect and see if they have the same space. Uh, so. I shared with my sister that this is a common occurrence for me. When I sit across from someone and we have a tarot reading, we have this incredibly intimate moment and we're, we're bonding over a question, an experience, maybe multiple, that is a fraction of someone's life. It is a moment in time and it's intense. Like her searching for an individual who's missing for someone. Uh, after that person leaves my table, one, they leave with insight. Two, they leave with homework. No one leaves my table without homework. <laughs> you got something to do. Uh, 
because um, it's it's not my life, it's yours, and you came for insight, uh, and and now you have new information, so now you have choices, and now you have actions to take. What rarely happens, very rarely happens, is do I see the person again? Um, it, it tarot readings tend to be one off. There are regulars that come back. And we can talk about what regularity in tarot reading means in another thing. There are regulars that come back. There are people who come back annually. There are people who come back monthly. Uh, but for those, the majority, it, it's a one-off experience. And that one-off, I, I never, I never know. Did what I say provide guidance? Did what I say help in the way that they were seeking help? Did what I say provide uh, what they needed in the moment? Short of immediate feedback. Thank you so much. This was great. I know what I need to do. I feel so much better. I feel lighter. I feel happier. Um, I, I feel confident. Uh, I, I still feel bad, but I, I know that I've been heard. I still feel angry, but I, um, I know there's something I can do if I choose to do it. You know, there's an, 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 a myriad of emotions. But I never know what happens. I don't know, and so uh, I had to. F I had to find a way to reconcile for myself that in my need to be available for others and in my need to support others through what they're going through, in addition to creating connections to uh, a greater sense of self and awareness and purpose, I'm not always going to know where that leads the person who's been at my table. So what did I do? How do I do? Um, how do I experience that? I, uh, at the start of every session, I, I prepare myself for what I'm about to do. Um, whether that session is for five hours or a five hours meeting, I may sit with multiple people or a singular session with a, a clear beginning and an end uh, with buffer time around or no other readings around them. I prepare myself and that preparation is one, a connection to a greater um, energy around me and all of the things around me, because I think we're all connected, uh, inclusive of, you know, the spirit of this is a plant over here, inclusive of the spirit of, of plants, but also inclusive of the spirit of inanimate objects that I think also exist. It's all connected. It all has a life uh, in some way. And I connect to all of that and I draw it in and I, I have a greater connection. But in doing so, I also protect myself because if I'm drawing in all that energy, I need to be prepared for what I'm about to get. So I protect myself and the protection keeps me distanced and yet connected. It keeps me objective and yet uh, tethered. Uh, it keeps me grounded and yet available. Um, kind of it, it feels like binaries, but it's it's more than that. It's spectrum and it's constantly moving. It's constantly moving. Uh, then during the course of the reading, uh, there, oh, sorry, there's like physical versions of that. And then there's the, the mental version, um, but it all leads to something physical. Because if it's not physical, then I'm not connected. If it's up here, I'm forcing it, faking it. It's not real. Um, so So that happens. And then after the reading, there is a ritual that happens between each one. Sometimes that's just getting up and walking out of the room. Um, sometimes it's recognizing my feet are still on the floor. Sometimes it's taking a, um, a spray I've created to clear the energy of the room. And I just <laughs> I clear the energy of the room. Sometimes I walk outside of a building because you got to let that shit go and you have to... Whoo, uh, and at the end of the day, I do the same thing. I have a ritual where I leave the space that I'm in. If I've been reading for a while, I thank those guides that I've been working with. I thank the room that I've been in and the energy that I've shared and the people who've come to see me. And I, in doing that, I release them. Uh, and she didn't have anything like that. My sister didn't have anything like that because she hadn't had the experience. She'd always been able to close the loop with the individuals who were looking and seeking her help for and seeking her out. So I shared with her uh, that I understood the idea of feeling that you don't get to close the loop. 
and that that's not her journey. Her journey was to be the guide. Her, her experience was to uh, bring together the like be the be the peanut butter and jelly in between this bread you know she she brought together this person who had passed and this person who was looking for their loved one she was in the middle I don't know why that had to be peanut butter and jelly it's kind of gross but you get the idea it's something in the middle she was not just one thing she was a multitude of things to many people and she she brought them together so the um the opportunity that I had was to share my experience. I didn't go through that it's all tarot. I just said, I talk to a lot of people all the time where I never know if what I've said is helpful, insightful, guidance, good or bad, if we wanna be subjective about it or what they do with it. And I had to um, release that. And if I don't release it, then I hang on to it. And she was doing that. She was hanging on to the emotions of the person who had asked for her help. She was, she was, um, not releasing them and they were they were for, for a dramatic word they were infesting her body and taking over her her thoughts and so i suggested that she one intend that the person that she had worked with was was um safe and secure and uh, grieving in a healthy way that she intend that they find peace, which for her, as someone who um, is a, a devout <clears throat> Christian who uh, believes in a, a God, she, she hears that as prayer. But in the moment we were talking, I know she heard it as intention because we talked, we used that word back and forth. Um, so however you see intention, I think um, prayer is another way to see it. The other thing uh, that comes from that is, well, how do you do it? <laughs> you know, when? And she was like, Seth, it's, it's a holiday. There's people here. They're going to be here all weekend. My house is busy. I can't get 10 minutes to myself. And normally I sit with something that is overwhelming and I, I allow it to go through me and then and find its way. I don't have time to do that and this one's different and I'm frustrated. I said, um, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It doesn't have to be um, because I've learned in between my readings, sometimes I don't have time. Sometimes I gotta let stuff go like that. Like it's gotta, we gotta clip and uh, and I gotta be ready and uh, an available conduit for what's next. So I suggested to her, when you get a chance to have your coffee, because this is usually when people take a moment, you know, they're not rushing, they're pouring their coffee, they're going to, they're at least going to have a sip. When you have a moment to have your coffee and you notice that that steam is coming up out of the cup, let that steam be the transformative release of everything you've held on to. Let the blow that you give to cool the edge of your coffee, that, that simple air coming out of you, be the intention and release everything you're holding on to through the intention of what you hope for this young person who would come to you for help. And let that steam continue to transform and go out into the world and let it go. Let it go. Uh, so we find a, we find a, a lot of experience in our own that we can share with others uh, this is one I wanted to share with you because even though the circumstances are extreme the practice is the same the practice is I've experienced something that is overwhelming and I don't know what to do with it. I have chosen to allow this experience to be a part of me and now I can choose to release it. And how I do that is to acknowledge it, accept that it is a part of me because of my lived experience, 
and in, in acknowledgement and acceptance, I then have the ability and the power to release that which no longer serves me. And I do that in ways that work for me, whether that's prayer, whether that is having an intention. And then we, we also can include the simplicity of ritual because ritual reminds us that we have agency, like closing the door when you leave the house. You close that, that moment, you end it. Like blowing the steam in your coffee. You've released that moment. It's gone. It's in the ether. It's for someone else to pick up if they choose. So ritual can be what, however you choose it to be. It doesn't have to engage an altar. It doesn't have to have a candle. It can have all those things, but it can be something simple if you have 30 seconds or 10 to release what no longer serves. So tarot readers, this is possible for you to in whatever way you choose, if it's a spray, if it's a blow of your <laughs> the steam of your coffee, if it is um, just taking a moment between readings and breathing in and breathing out and recognizing your feet are on the ground and you're still here and you're available for what's about to come. Uh, there, there's, there's many ways. So I hope this is helpful. <coughs> and I hope it's uh, not only helpful for those of you who are tarot readers, but also, the, also for those of you who are sitters who might need uh, a practice for your own experience after you leave the tarot reader and in, in recognizing your value, worth, power, agency, ability to continue in your own story and on your own journey and not hang to, hang on to other people's stuff because it ain't yours it's theirs <laughs>